Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, to improve access to finance credit for households in 2022. Haytham al Gaze of Kuwait emerges Secretary General of OPEC. Apple becomes first U.S. company to reach $3 trillion in market capitalization. World stocks inch higher in Tuesday trade. The program is Business Express and we're reaching you from Abu Janajira's capital on this very first working day of the year 2022. Of course, for those who went on holidays, I'm Leah Katun, Baba Tunde. You're welcome. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, says the banking sector will increase access to loans for Nigerian households and businesses in the year 2022. CBN Governor Mr. Godwin Emefale, who disclosed these in a statement, emphasized the need for all stakeholders to work to build a more resilient economy. He noted that the objective of the Central Bank in 2022 will be to increase access to loans for households with a pledge to sustain improved access to finance and credit for households and businesses, mobilize investment to boost domestic productivity, enable faster growth of non-oil exports and support employment generating activities while stressing that one of the vital lessons learned from the COVID-19 outbreak was the need to make conscious measures to diversify Nigeria's economic base. Emifale said all necessary approvals had been obtained for the infrastructure corporation to begin operations in early 2022. President of the Association of Rural Exchange Operators of Nigeria, Apkan Aminu Gwedebe, says the black market was in comatose due to the forest restrictions placed on them by the Central Bank of Nigeria. The Apex Bank last year stopped the foreign exchange intervention in the black market over alleged fraudulent transactions. The intervention was meant to complement the BDC operation with the Nigerian Autonomous Foreign Exchange, NAFEX which is the investors and exporters INE window officially recognized by CBN for Forex trading. In a statement issued in Lagos, Guadabay urged the Apex Bank to grant them access to NAFEX in a bid to obtain diaspora remittances and increase the black market's Forex liquidity. Reports also noted that one trillion naira annual transaction volume and other capital investments in the BDC are at risk over the Forex ban. Now, how much is the Naira exchanging for other currencies? Let's find out.
Investing money is a great source of making a passive income and there are many investment opportunities in Nigeria today. And of course, we will be looking particularly this moment at the impact of the fintech sector, which is an entirely strong one, of course, on the Nigerian economy in the year 2021 and what the sector will look like in 2022. And to talk about this is Aliu Shata from Kungapi. You're welcome to Business Express this morning. Yeah, thank you very much for having me as usual. I hope you had some very, very nice holidays. Yeah, sure. We've relaxed. I'm ready to move straight to work. So you start today with the find attached, find attached, find attached. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, generally, what will be your assessment of the fintech space in 2021? How did it perform? Yeah, it, it performed credi credibly well. And um, there's, there was a lot of uptake in terms of um, different use cases that we, we have. Mm -hmm. And if you see, that also brought about some mixed feelings with the cryptocurrency, yeah. you know, the digital currency, mm -hmm. the in era, mm -hmm. and all that. So it was, it was you know, uh, a platform. The fintech space was a platform for you know everybody to make their own contributions in terms of digitizing finance generally across board and it's has also created a lot of interest most especially you know from foreign investments and all that when you see some um, fintech local fintech organization attracting you know funds as high as 200 million dollars oh, wow. 100 million dollars 400 million dollars you know as the case may be because of the valuation in the market and this is largely due to the huge volume of transactions that we've had that cross through the digital space and one of the key drivers for all of these is actually technology you know technology is the one driving most of these processes and it has actually put the fintech industry on a global map and that's the reason why we saw that massive increase compared to 2020 actually the growth started from yeah. 2020 with the uh, covid yeah. um, lockdown so everybody woke up to this reality shock to know that we cannot begin to do transaction online and that you know awareness started growing and it expanded through 2021 so we were able to grow between 56 to about 75 percent so do we say compared that to 2022. do we say that covid is a blessing for the fintech space in nigeria yeah it's a blessing in disguise uh, because <laughs> yeah <laughs> blessing in disguise because the fintech just had to you know tap into that opportunity that you know f um, the covid 19 presented because at that time it was physical distancing or social distances as mm -hmm. the case may be. So everybody started doing transaction, delivery started happening at your mm -hmm. doorsteps. People started waking up to, you know, doing transaction online. E-commerce started blowing up and mm -hmm. e-commerce is actually one of the game changer because we are a largely consuming nation and almost everybody from either the elite and the middle class, you know, woke up to this reality. Even the lower class started coming up you know, to join this elite group because the penetration of um, Android phones in Nigeria and network penetration aided some of this disruption that we have in the that we had in the uh, in the in the previous year. And this is exactly what metamorphosized into what we are seeing today, where fintech is becoming the major player in the financial sector. So, the fundamentals like the exchange rate affect your space last year. Yes, of course it did because um, when, like I said, technology is one of the drivers and for, for us in the fintech where we invest heavily in technology and we, you also have to like, you know, put your data in cloud and all that. So exchange rates definitely affected your cost of running business. So the cost of running business actually increased. And of course, a lot of competi competition also came in. A lot of people were coming into the industry. So there was price war. So you are battling with, you know, maintaining your cost of production or cost of service or cost of delivery versus the profit that you are also making. So it, it actually disrupted the ecosystem. The people who were given the IMTO license, that's International Remitters License, also, you know, witnessed that. Because if you look at the amount of money, uh, the, the average amount of money you use in Naira to exchange for a dollar, mm -hmm. and you have to settle for a large chunk of you know, transactions outside the country or even inside the country. So outbound and inbound transaction for the Forex space was actually affected, most especially for those who are um, local, 
in Nigeria. So it affected businesses across board generally. Okay, so you had already mentioned earlier that uh, we saw a lot of investment coming in to small uh, fintech uh, companies. But how would you um, cap the, the level of mergers and acquisitions in the sector last year? Yeah, it was great. Most of the mergers and partnership, uh, as the case may be, were strategic. Because and I can also tell you that that will even largely happen this year. Oh, wow. crossing to 2025. Okay. You know, a lot of players have come to saturate the environment, to test the waters, but not everybody will be able to sustain that tempo. Okay. So strategic alliance will actually come to play. And that's exactly why I've seen most of those measures, most of those strategic partnerships, because you need each other to, to actually operate. So they, we started seeing ourselves as less of competition than collaborators. Okay. So because if you collaborate more, you win more in the space. So what are you bringing versus what I'm presenting? You know, we put our solutions together to offer to the users out there and it becomes more vibrant because my strength complements your weakness, your weakness complements my strength, so vice versa. And that's exactly why you are seeing that those strategic alliances are very, very key in delivering digital payments in Nigeria. Oh, okay, from last year till now, there was a lot of Japan concepts and people, young people just wanting to get out. And these are the people basically in this space. Is it a source of concern that we have young people just migrating away from here in that space? Yeah, it, it's painful because uh, most of our experts, you know, all of us, most of us are, are being poached or they want to poach us out of, you know, Nigeria because they know that you've got the experience. They know that Nigeria is a veritable market. We have the population. So they know that if you can thrive in the Nigerian market, you will thrive anywhere. So for those who could not actually sustain uh, probably th their own um, um, skills in the country, you know, we are being pushed outside the country for them to actually go and improve other people's economy, sadly. Because at a youthful age, you are supposed to be contributing to your own economy. Yeah. But there's hope. Because um, most young people are still in Nigeria. They believe in the Nigerian content. They believe in the Nigerian um, uh, project. So they are still in Nigeria. Because what I will guarantee you is if you can operate your business in Nigeria, there's every possibility, 60%, 70% chance that you can move into different African countries and you will still thrive. Because Nigeria <coughs> is like a pilot stage where whenever you test any concept, any solution, any idea, you can actually cascade that down to the different surrounding um, West African countries that we have, even to some large extent, Southern Af Africa and um, Central Africa, basically. So I, what I would say is basically, yes, we have that you know, large influx of people going out. We also have a lot of youth who believe in the Nigerian project, who actually want to make an impact Despite the fact that we also have our own peculiar challenges, because policies have also largely, you know, affected the way we do business in Nigeria. And I feel that if we can also look into that, it will ease the pain of young entrepreneurs to be able to stabilize in the country. Because when you talk about over taxation, double taxation, you know, the ease of doing business. I've said it periodically. I don't always want to sound like a broken record when I say, um, when you talk about ease of doing business, it's not, you know, the speed that you use in registering a company and you deliver, but what is the incubation period they give you, the five years incubation period they give you to try. If you go to Ghana, for instance, it's X tax for young entrepreneurs who want to contribute to the economy. So if we can, you know, use that same template and localize it in Nigeria, we can customize it, then you watch the growth, you contribute to that um, space, watch the growth and see how they actually, you know, progress from the, from the very moment where they started uh, in the first instance. Then the next thing I also want to talk about is um, the guidelines. You know, we need to, by the time we are coming up with frameworks, agreement that guides most of these operations, we need to also engage the stakeholders who are already in the industry so they can share their experiences. And from there, you can come up with, you know, strategic frameworks that will help deepen the process of implementing digital uh, payment services in Nigeria. Okay, so you mentioned earlier um, payments across 
the continent and of course um, the AFCFTA, the uh, Pan-African Payment uh, System kicks off as well. We have the INARA and we have all other uh, forms of payment that are available in Nigeria. What do all these things hold for the sector in 2022? Um, fantastic opportunities. Fantastic opportunities in the sense that with what you have talked about, you know, we are bringing Africa together, the African continent together to perform trade. And when you are doing cross-border payment or cross-border trade, cross-border payment comes to play. And that is where you have the peer-to-peer -peer transaction, which is exactly what is going to aid liquidity, you know, for us in terms of foreign exchange. So when we say we have low liquidity in terms of, you know, Forex and all that, if we aid cross-border payment and we aid technology to drive the process, of course, we already have the um, IMTO licenses that where people can actually participate in that, in that space. Mm -hmm. We have e-commerce that is borderless. So someone can, for instance, um, you know, um, order for a product online, probably from Conga in Ghana, in South Africa, in name it, any country, and you have it delivered at your doorstep. That is cross-border transaction. That is cross-border business so if we can facilitate all of this ecosystem together most of what you've talked about the inera is a means of making payment then you can inject it into the payment option when you call up the payment option for you to make payment across any country so these are all the opportunities that are there for us to tap in into and i want to guarantee you that this year is going to be there's going to be a major disruption in the system because it has been estimated already that we are going to make about $523 million in revenue in the fintech space alone. So what does this tell you? It tells you that there is massive growth in the industry. It also tells you that this is an industry that is also going to employ a lot of you know, unemployed youths. It is a sector that is connecting different ecosystems together. You want to talk about the agricultural value chain. You want to talk about disbursement conditional cash transfer, you want to talk about housing, you want to talk about, name it. It is an industry that connects all the entire ecosystem. And I'll give you an example. You see, people are a bit skeptical when you approach them for lands, for housing and all that, because you, know, you have dubious agents out there. But if you have a thought process where on, on let's say, on our e-commerce site, you have an advertisement to say, okay, micro housing. So because people know that your organization have that trust, people know that your organization have that integrity, they will come there to, you know, to, to, to want to do trade. They will so, want to do transaction So why we, we, why we look at all that, and before I let you go, do we have the backbone, the infrastructure, to hold onto this amount of investments that you, that you think is going to come in? Of course, we do. If we don't, they won't come in the first place because they believe in the system. We've created that infrastructure. Digital payment actually started fully in the early 2000 into 2010 and 2012 where CBN gave us the strategic, um, the financial inclusion strategic framework. And from then, it has been a disruptive, you know, um, system where positive disruption anyways yeah, you know <laughs> where a lot of you know ideas a lot of in initiative uh, actually come to play so we the infrastructure has been created it is just for us to begin to lay those ideas on those infrastructure and make them grow into what we actually want them to be okay. basically all right and most sincerely thank you Ali Shata, for always making time to come on the program it's always a pleasure thank you very much thank you do have a nice one and we move next to surviving COVID-19 series as put together by Nekaoko surviving COVID-19 series is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria my name is Mohammed. Our popular knows our soldier near our shopping center here. We sell materials, we sell brocades and other cuffs, including shoes and other things like that. I've been a long time, I'm getting close to 20 years I'm doing this business. Well, I choose probably because of the nature of people who are making fashion. People like wear clothes, dress and occasionally and other activities. Uh, COVID-19 has touched everybody actually. Including my family, everybody knows that lockdown is there. 
because we remain at home, nobody said anything. So you must affect you because yeah, we are not going anywhere. We're still at home. So automatically, this lockdown we see is affect every, especially those that are traveling, go and buy something, come back, and you be at home with no buy anything and sell. So it's affected. It's affecting everybody, especially who does has a small money. Before all those who are sitting at home, he's lashed all the whole money at home. But when he came back, he started back to square one, because it's locked everybody down. And it's locked how many days? Almost 60 days we'll be at home. Nobody assists me with anyone now. I have not received any support. But although I'm hearing people are saying they are benefiting, but me, I do not benefit of anybody. I do not apply for any loan, I do not get anything. When you stay at home for a long time, then you now came back into your business. At least before you take you to be non former things you are doing, it will take you time. Just, you can't compare. At least it's moving gradually. But you cannot compare as before. But for the first thing I'm advising anybody who wants to enter the business, number one, you need to be patient. Anybody count 10, started from one. You cannot say 10. No, you have to start from one. So anybody who wants to join business, whatever kind of business you want to join, you need to be patient. Surviving COVID-19 series is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. The organization of the petroleum exporting countries, OPEC, has voted to appoint Kuwaiti candidate Haytham al as its new secretary general. In a statement, the oil organization said al was selected at a special meeting of the conference of OPEC held via video conference on Monday, January 3, 2022. He will replace Mohamed Sanusi Barikindu, a Nigerian representative, when his second term as OPEC secretary general ends July 2022. In accordance with Article 28 of the OPEC statute and in the application of the procedure decided at the 182nd meeting of the conference on 1st December 2021, the conference decided by acclamation to appoint Mr. Haytham al of Kuwait as Secretary General of the organization with effect from 1st August 2022 for a period of three years. al a veteran of the Kuwait Petroleum Corporation, KPC, and Kuwait's OPEC governor from 2017 to June 2021, currently serves as Deputy Managing Director for International Marketing at KPC. The conference of OPEC expressed appreciation to Barkindu for his leadership during his two-term tenure as Secretary General from August 1, 2016 to end by July 31, 2022. And still with OPEC, its Secretary General Mohamed Sanusi Barkindu says looking at demand. The organization foresees world oil demand increasing by 4.2 million barrels per day in 2022, unchanged from last month. World total demand in 2022 is pegged at 100.6 million barrels per day, surpassing pre-pandemic levels. Some of the recovery previously expected in the fourth quarter of 2021 has now shifted to first quarter of 2022. Many economies are now better equipped to manage COVID-19 and its side effects. In spite of the steady progress that has been made in terms of the economic recovery, we do expect significant levels of uncertainty in the weeks to come, which could slow the growth momentum. In addition to closely monitoring the evolving impacts of the Omicron variant, other factors to consider, Chairman, will be the varying speed of vaccine rollouts worldwide. We move to the commodities market. Markets resume this morning in Nigeria outside home. 
Apple's talks advanced and got to uh, $3 trillion market capitalization, the first uh, so far in the history of U.S. Uh, stocks market. And then stocks across the globe show positive sentiments in Tuesday trade as markets open in countries previously closed for public holidays. Nekaoko gives us the details. This positive New Year momentum continues in global markets. Stocks in Asia were mixed in Tuesday trade. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index fell 0.06%, while the Shanghai Composite of China slipped 0.28%. As way, stocks in Japan and Australia started their trading year on Tuesday following a Monday holiday, which saw the Nikkei 2 to 5 climbing 1.77%. Data from London shows that European stocks are expected to open higher on Tuesday. UK's FTSE index is seen opening 18 points higher at 7,384. Germany's DAX is seen 7 points higher and CAC 40 of France is seen rising 15 points. U.S. stock futures were steady in overnight trade after the Dow Jones Industrial Average and S&P 500 notched new record closes on the first trading day of 2022. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell just 20 points, S&P 500 slid, and Nasdaq Composite went the positive way. The stock market in Africa are expected to join the optimistic trend as most of them resume Tuesday after the public holidays. Namibia and South Africa are already posting gains with Namibia overall index adding 0.08% and South Africa increasing by 0.57%. Thank you, Nekka. And this is the end of Business Express today. Do join us tomorrow at 3 p.m. Thanks for watching.